<laughs> as I pressed record. Oh, my children came back. You can say a quick hello, then you've got to go and do something else. Hello and goodbye. Mickey, what's this? Um, Correct. Right. <laughs> So this is Hannah, and thank you so much for all your support. Hello, Jesse. How are swimming? Um, wow, so many comments already. Yeah. Okay, listen. I can see already some of the comments of things like come to Peru, come to different countries. Can we just <laughs> get out of here? Get out of here. <laughs> um, I obviously want to go everywhere. I want to go everywhere and sing for you. Um, thank you so much for all the lovely comments and everything this week. It's been incredible. And welcome to the listening party. I'm so glad you're here. I thought maybe I'd be on my own. And so I brought some company, not just my children. What's this little fella? Just in case. Just in case it was just me. Um, oh, and before we go any further, uh, the best comment that I received this evening, which I will judge afterwards because there's a few right now, I'm going to give you a little gift, a prize. And I was thinking, what can I give? I found these. These are... The leftover nails that I didn't use. I'm always wearing fake nails because I bite my nails. So these are my nails on the album cover. And you too could create the same look. Look, there you go. So put a nice comment and you could be experiencing these talons, courtesy of me. Um, anyway, let's have a little look what you're saying. Did someone just have evil eyes? Oh, you meant the dog. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, Beyond the Universe, next single. That's a good idea, Renzo. Let's see what happens. Um, oh, lots of nice little... Don't worry, safe. I bite my nails too. Thanks, Space Cowboy. Solidarity and a bad habit. Do you also go for the little bits of skin? I think it's just gone a bit stressed this week. I'm, not st I'm happy, but you know, things are on my mind. Um, anyway, it ain't no listening party. That's something to listen to. So in a minute, we'll start the music. But um, you want the blue dog, Natalia? The doggy is mine, but I can leave it to you in my will. <laughs> um, Harry, it says, how are you? I'm actually really good. Um, yeah, I feel, I feel really happy. I've had a good day. Um, I'm trying to very much just enjoy the moment. Uh, Hannah is in the top three of the UK album charts at the moment, which is flipping phenomenal. And I really appreciate it. It's not lost on me that that's a very special thing. So thank you to all of you. I'm sure you are the reason why you love your people. <laughs> We're making a Lego set. We're making a Lego set. Yeah, there's some Lego going on. It's 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 evening. It's six o'clock in the Ellis Bexter Jones household. Business as make? usual. Um, ooh la la! I can have that money to go for school. Says Emmanuel. Yeah, you could definitely do that. No problem at all. Because a lot of you confessing to nail biting. I feel I've inadvertently started a nail biting forum. Should we all try and stop? Things I don't really want to. It's fine. I don't really mind. I've done it since I was little. Shall we listen to music? Is now a good time to listen to music? Yes. Getting the nod. All right, let's start. So the album, Ed and I wrote it. <laughs> um, the album is very much a side A, side B sort of thing. And when Ed and I wrote this one, which is called A Thousand Orchids, we were like, that's how we're going to start the record. So the lyrics start with, you'll find no witches waiting here, no ghosts hidden within the dark. And that is actually a reference to the last two albums, to Wonderlust and Familia, because we had... The witch from Love is a Camera who resurfaced on Hush Little Voices. <laughs> but she is not welcome here. We knew her. We don't need to see your group. Hi. We didn't. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we thought we're not going to have the witch come back. We're not going to have the runaway bride. We're going to have um, something different, something new. So this song is all about moving yourself into a new sphere, moving into a new orbit. Um, I think it's not a coincidence that this album was written in and out of lockdowns and became about escape and other and looking to something else. I think that's why it's also Hannah, meaning the word for spring and blossom, so that you're looking ahead. It's about the optimism of what comes after. Uh, the middle of, mid of thousand or middle eight of thousand orchids is next. Thank you, Renzo. I really love it too. Um, Stranger Things vibes in this track from Adam. Thank you, that's a big compliment. Why you say Stranger Things? I did say Stranger Things, I knew you'd pick up on that level of he is. Um, are the represses of your last two albums going to be coloured? I don't know, would you like them to be coloured? Uh, we need the lyrics on Spotify. Oh, no, are they not? That's annoying. I put them all here, coupled with um, my uh, characteristic spelling mistakes. Sometimes people, someone messaged me saying these are the spelling mistakes. It's me. I write the lyrics myself. Any spelling mistakes are mine. Any mistakes? And this is definitely on me. 
Um, Poppy says it's so beautiful. Thank you, Poppy. I hope you're good. Oh, it's really lovely. Dave Cromwell, you're there. Hello, Dave. How are you? Um, this is so nice to see you all. A thousand orchids made me cry, says Mel. Thank you. Well, um, I suppose there's something very exciting about being a bit dramatic with an album, and you can do a real statement of intent. What do you think about this track? Um, cake. Cakey. It's cakey. You cake. heard it here. Cake. It's cake. Love cake. You love cake. You love this track. I'm, I'm down for it. <laughs> um, no, Mickey, you're not actually doing this. It's too hot in Mexico for a cup of tea. Oh, a cup of tea in Mexico. I have one. I've got one. Who's that, Emmanuel? No, it's my tea. no, it doesn't have anybody on it. Anyway, back to the record. <laughs> back to the record. Yeah, um, I can't wait to perform this one live. It's so it's big and bold and hopefully a bit ethereal. I wanted that, I wanted something a bit heavenly. So yes. And uh, whenever Ed and I write, this is what we're thinking of the vinyl. We're thinking side A, side B. So um, yeah. <laughs> wow, I'd normally push him away, but he's so much cuter than me. Right, let's have a look at some more. I swim regularly on the beach before below time at Priory when we saw you last. Do you? God, that was so beautiful, that gig. Like, honestly, I think one of the most beautiful gigs I've ever done, actually. That was the, uh, what's it called? Oh, golly, what was it called, that gig? Uh, Mouth of Time. That was the one. That was beautiful. Beautiful. Gorgeous song. Thank you. You've all been so nice. Hannah tour in South America. Yes, count me in. We're actually looking at doing a tour in Europe for next year. Uh... Watch this face. Mm. I'm going in. You're going on tour? Yeah. Mickey on the tour bus. Thanks all that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really caught a moment in time, says Roger. Thank you. Um, you know what? That's what I always quite like about making music, is there's always this last minute serendipity about when you release what. All right, on with the record. What we've got next? We've got, I should know this off by heart, shouldn't I? Breaking stuff. Got it. Um... Yeah, by the way, if you have Murder one of the early... Floor. No, not Murder and Dance Floor. Keep <laughs> up. That's the first record. <laughs> Murder and Dance Honestly, Floor. Honestly, I educate... Murder and Dance Floor. Oh, you're another one. Just You play Med Hardcore as well, that. <laughs> Why will you put on Murder and Dance Floor? It's not all about murder on the dance floor, Mickey. Why will you put on Murder and Dance Floor? <laughs> Mickey can play tambourine. Good suggestion. Someone thinks you can play tambourine, Mickey. I don't know. I don't um, play tambourine. Breaking the Circle <laughs> is all about... Um, can you hear it? Okay. It's gone quiet. Oh, that's very quiet. A listening party. There we go. Um, breaking the circle is all about those conversations you have at like two or three in the morning when you feel a bit invincible and you feel like imbued with a sort of adrenalism and optimism for the next day. <laughs> Change the lyrics to there's Mickey on the dance floor. Have you got that? There's Mickey on the dance floor. Um, Breaking of the Circle was released on your birthday, says Elliot. Happy birthday for whenever that came out. February? March. Remixes, F9 remixes, that would be good. I love the F9 remixes this time. Um, but yes, this song is dramatic and bold, and I had my first ever performance of it with the BBC Orchestra for the piano of <laughs> And, um... Yeah, this is impossible. Um, and so I had the whole band with Ed on piano. He doesn't always play with me. He's going to be at the Lafayette gig. That's Ed Harper, who I wrote the album with. Nice moves. Um, and uh, yeah, I love when I love when I hear the track back. I can really hear the band. I can hear Richard on bass. I can hear Pablo's guitar. I can hear my brother Jackson on drums. I can hear. Ed's piano, it's so driven. We've got extra synths from my neighbour Simon. He is a record producer. He's got a whole room full of synths. Whole room full of synths. Whole room full of synths, man. <laughs> what? Baby. <laughs> What's this song? Butty butts. All going out. <laughs> um, I seriously love this song, says Frank. Mommy. Thank you. Um, it's actually one of my favourites too. And it's that nice thing where when we thought first single, it was like, yes, hell yes. All that drama. And um, whenever I do it live, I just love it. My favourite bit 
is when you come out the middle eight and there's that tiny little moment where it all goes and then breaks back in. I've realized in a lot of music, I really love the gaps. That's where the tension is. Why don't you do duets? I would do a duet. Um, in fact, hold that thought. I will tell you who I are. You playing air guitar. Very nice. Do it this way. Hey. Show everybody your air guitar. <laughs> um, yeah, I hold that thought and I'll tell you who I asked to do a duet with me on this album. He said no, but I do ask. <laughs> right, sorry, will you talk a bit more about the video? So, nice thing for the video is that I um, I worked with, on the video, a guy called Remy Lauder. Now, Remy's mum is called Lisa Lauder. Lisa's been my hair and makeup artist since 2002. One, we met on the set of Take Me Home. She worked with me with Sophie Muller. When I made Wonderlust, Remy came along to assist on the video because he was already very interested in video production and now he's in his 30s and actually a video director. So I've known him since he was about 14 and it's so sweet. We ended up working together and he was a really brilliant director. And obviously his mum did the um, hair and makeup as well. Petition for Mickey to air guitar on the next video. I don't think we need any encouraging for this. Um, what is the meaning of the video? What is the meaning? I suppose what I was trying to do is do a sort of lucid dream kind of a, you're, you wake up and you have this experience and all these different things happen, but did any of it happen or were you dreaming the whole thing? Uh, where's the dress from the video from? Ah, yes, it's very pretty, isn't it? A woman called Julia Clancy, whose stuff I'd coveted for ages and then the video came along and I was like, oh, I've got an excuse to get it now. And that's actually the same frock I am wearing. Here, uh, when I first started making videos, I felt very self-conscious about having to wear different things all the time because you're encouraged to think that's important. And then when I got to Wonderlust, I realized actually people can cope with continuity. So I started wearing one outfit for lots of things. So with Wonderlust, I wore a white dress for everything. Should we have the next song? Before Mickey uh, takes over everything. This is Mummy. No, it's Mummy. <laughs> what have we got next? Um. Oh, by the way, this is mommy. Okay, it's mommy again. Do you like the way that the album has got the track listing on the front here? Um, That's the part I put in. Um, credit to Sunny. This is, is that here? And this, for some of the way that artwork this looks. This is my brother. That is your brother, Sunny. That's right. There he is. This is a photo I took on the way home from Tokyo. My brother. And who's this? Mummy's mummy. Mummy's mummy. So this song, break um, until the wheels fall off. Until the wheels fall off is the most personal of all the songs on the album. This message might get slightly undermined at this point. Um, it was inspired by a letter that my stepdad left. My lovely, lovely stepdad, John. Um, when he died in July of 2020, he had left behind a letter and it basically gave instructions for his funeral, uh, the speech he wanted to make and he gave this amazing tribute to my mum yeah. and the life they lived together and all the love and adventure that was in it. And the essence of it was basically that the way you win at life is by taking on all the adventures, burning the fancy candles, drinking the good wine, don't wait, <laughs> don't wait for life. Just go and seize it. So that's why I said, you know, everyone's waiting for the perfect moment. <laughs> but actually, the here and now is what we have. There is a man up in the bottom of your sock. So that's what this has. So a lot of the lyrics are taken directly from that letter. He said, um, we laughed and loved till the wheels fell off. Fell off. And didn't all pass by at such great speed. <laughs> Do you like Rome? I live nearby. Do you like Rome? <laughs> we love Italy very much. Do you like... have food? Do you have food? Sorry for the swearing, guys. Sophie, can you say a few words in Spanish? Do you have food? Do you have food? You're going to go outside if you keep doing that. Um, uh, hola. Uh, estoy muy contenta. Oh, what was the thing I got taught when I was in Mexico? Oh, blimey. It'll come to me. Ah, it means like everything's so cool. Oh, esto, esto. Damn it. I can't remember. I had to write it down phonetically when I did the gig in Mexico the other day. But it was there at the time. Oh, you know what? It's going to pop back into my head about hours, time. Can you make a video with footage of Janet Ellis and John? 
Do you know what? I actually thought about that. I picked it with this song. If we did a video, I would have just a photo of a thing. You know when you scroll through your photo library on your phone really fast and all the pictures are like, da -da 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 -da, and I pictured their whole love story from beginning to end. And that would be the video. But, I don't know. It would probably make me, make me cry too much, I think. But I do adore this song. And for what it's worth, I think John would have liked it. I kind of wanted to reference um, the Springsteen, War on Drugs with the production because that's the sort of music we listen to. And when I sang it, it just felt glorious and so sweet to sing a song for him, but also with, you know, my brother, his son on drums. Yes, all good. Right, next, where are we? Everything is sweet. Okay, so everything is sweet. Everything is sweet. <laughs> Do you know this one? Mummy. That's yeah. mummy. That's gonna be a running thing. Um, Everything is sweet sounds like it's about everything being good, but it's actually a song about obsessive love when you really want someone and they are not paying you any attention and you're really uh, convinced if you could just make everything perfect, they'd suddenly notice you and you'd fall in love and everything would be gorgeous. So that's why it's saying, when everything is sweet and lovely, maybe then you would help me. <laughs> Um, I will read all your comments, by the way, and choose who gets these nails. Yeah. Um, Vox got slightly ripped by Mickey just before I started. You got in a bit of trouble about that, didn't you? Come here. He's a dreamer. He's so good. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. It's so nice reading this. Thank you. I want to read the messages. Marco's written for that. Oh, am I going crazy being Ray of Light? You know what? You're not the first person to tell me about this album in a bit of Ray of Light. I guess it's because William Orbit, with his production, does a similar thing with lots of synths. Lots of um, proggy space, but then also underpinned with a lot of uh, the live element. All the drumming on this album is my brother Jack, and he was absolutely the right drummer for it. He's so tight, he hits really hard, and it keeps it really uh, metronomic. I really, I really love it. That mommy. Yes. Is there a witch trilogy to be found in your album? No. She only she was there on Familia and Wanderlust, and then I left her behind. That's why I started the album saying there's no witches. There's no witches, there's no runaway bride like we had in um, Christ the Beat of the Band and um, oh, what was the one, the next one? Ah. Nee, 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 nee. What was the name of the song with the bride on the second nee, 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 nee. <laughs> Work with William Orbit, says Cash. Yeah, maybe, that would be amazing. Called Noonie. Very, cool. Noonie, Called very Noonie. talented. The little doggy we much appreciate. What part of the world will you go to the future album? I'm not sure. And what's the next single from Hannah? Hold Again, it. not sure. Um, I think the next single is Conversations About Three. So we're talking about reflections or beyond the universe or maybe until the wheels fall off. I think it's probably between reflections and beyond the universe. Have you guys got any thoughts on that? Does Mickey know a Japanese word? Nah. Nah, I'm, I'm trying to teach him a bit of Italian actually, but it's not going very well. Uh, come to Belgrade, says Ivan. I'd love to. I really love going everywhere. Invite me, book me. Plans are going to Japan and shooting a music video there. You kind of caught on to my ulterior motive of making this record. We had such a good time in Tokyo, didn't we, really? And I would yeah. love to go back. But would you like to go to Japan? Yeah. Yes. I want to go to Japan. Yeah, you see, one person says Beyond the Universe, one person says Reflection, one person says Beyond the Universe. This is how. Next one, Reflections. This is how the debate happens with singles. Hearing in colour, do you love that one, Poppy? Are you gonna sing, how excited are you to sing Camp Festival? Can't wait, loved it last year. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, the festivals have just been glorious. I'm currently deciding what I should wear for Glastonbury. I was doing it this morning, I was sort of like looking online and choosing stuff. It's exciting, isn't it? Um, whoa, that was a small four-year-old foot. Don't worry. Will I make a duet yeah. with Ed Harcourt? Ah. So Ed sings, hmm, I'm trying to remember which one he put BBs on. I did get him to sing. Actually, he sings on Until the Wheels Fall Off. There's his voice on that. Um, and uh, what other one did he sing on? No, I think that's it, actually. Oh, I was quite strict. He normally sneaks in on a few more. Yeah. Um, but I love Ed's voice. Yes, we used to do a duet together on tour when he was in my band for a one tour. Hello from Russia. 
Hello, nice to see you. God, you guys are from all over the place. Very exciting. I want to go to China, says Ali. Yeah, I'd love to go. I've only been to Hong Kong. Um, love your music, but I never see the band. Oh, um, come to a gig. I'll be there. <laughs> so this one, Lost in the Sunshine. So the single that's out at the moment, uh, the second single we brought out. This song has had the good fortune to have been released at a time when, in the UK at least, we actually have had good weather. Um, before it came out, I was like, this is actually not really going to work if the sky is not blue. It came together very easily, this track. I can really see it in my head. As I say, an after-glowing Clementine, because I was thinking of that sepia tone. I was thinking already of a sort of nostalgia of a hot, hazy, heavy day. Really, really fun. Um, so I'm going to press this button so I can see your messages. Are you in London now? Yes, I'm at home. Um, says Horatio, yes, I'm at home. Uh, and after I talk to you, I'm going out for dinner with my sister, which is nice. I haven't had done that for ages. It's my birthday present. Uh, will you tour Scandinavia? Yes, watch this space. We are currently working on a tour for Europe, Scandinavia, Italy, lots of places I didn't go last um, on the last European tour. That was in February. Yes. Will you be up for collaborating on Hannah's follow up album? Uh, Kylie Minogue. I could ask Kylie. She's brilliant. I love Kylie. I don't know yet. I haven't started writing it, so I need to see. Oh, there's so many. Look, Germany. Hello, Vera in Cologne. Hello, Stefano in Rome. Hello, Oliver in Peru. Oh, you guys are amazing. Thank you for setting your clocks to come and find me. Oh, the empathy coach says we've got the pastel pink vinyl today. Ooh. So it's now my only unsigned. Lucky you. I actually feel like the unsigned copies of things are the rarest ones. <laughs> um, I don't actually own the pink vinyl yet, so that's nice you have it. Does it look good? I hope so. Each song links into the next song, which makes it such a, Roger says, makes it such a what, Roger? Dot, dot, dot. Well, anyway, we did put a lot of thought into the running order. That's always a bit where Ed and I really get very obsessive about how's it going to work. What do you think about nowadays music businesses to be? Um, I think uh, I love the fact that there's a lot more dialogue between me and people listening to my music. I like the immediacy. I like I like the fact that as a music fan, I can access music very easily and quickly. It's all good. Yeah, I'm happy. Um, thank you, Empathy Coach. to hear the vinyl's nice. Thank you. Mona says, you're going to Italy next year. Oh, definitely seeing you again there. That'd be nice. Yes. Oh, my body's back. Lost in the sunshine to your jam. Thank you. Oh, Ronald, I miss you. I need to make an effort to see you again. Ronald, come find me. Um, thank you for music, says Marco. Will you help me? Is it any wonder help me? Oh, thank you. I love that song. That was written in a very snowy New York. Um, so, Drew Buck said, I watched a 4K walk around Japan as I listened to the album. Oh, that's very lovely. Oh, that's very special. Thank you. See, sometimes when you guys tell me you're listening to my music in other countries and other cities, it's like I'm traveling there virtually. What an amazing, that's magic. Thank you. Um, Sophie, I loved you since 2001 when you were 11. Oh, thank you. Wow, that's a long-term relationship. What have we got now? Ah, oh, Tokyo. So this track was quite special because um, it sort of set the ball rolling in terms of framing what the album is but I actually wrote it the week before I flew to Tokyo um, and I had an idea of what it was going to be like but I didn't know and I went to Tokyo with my mum and uh, Sunny. I wasn't supposed to go at all. Uh, my stepdad was going to go. That's right, quickly. Um, and uh, yeah, I thought that uh, I wasn't going to go because my stepdad was supposed to go. He was too early in the end to go. So I went. So I had this idea of what it'd be like. And the reason I say um, you show a path to go down the streets which I cannot name is because my mum was basically the one setting up the trip. She was planning where we were going to do with our time. I said we take shelter from the rain because the forecast was for rain. In the end, it didn't rain at all. But yeah, I love the kind of woozy psychedelia of this track. It's, it's, it's very, um, it's very seventies proggy. Well, for me, and it's the closest I've ever come to sounding like Pink Floyd, which was my first and second ever live show that I went to with my dad. Um, but I definitely wanted something that had that trippy, blissed out kind of feel. Um, yeah, I think it it works for what it is. It feels nice to sing. Man. 
Oh, that's lovely, Jess. Pleasure, everybody. Jesse, who's serving us, been doing this while we've been talking. That's beautiful, Jess. You can see that. It's really lovely. As it happens, Jesse's got really into drawings and made up anime, haven't you? It's really good, Jesse. It's really beautiful. I mean, I shouldn't really let him draw on Sharpie, but it looks good. I am You are, but I just worry about Nikki finding it. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a look what's going on with you guys. Tokyo is very beautiful, says so Poplar TV. Thank you. Um, Favourite song in the universe? The album is Beyond the Universe. Should be the next single, says Alex. Hey, Alex. Um, what about beautiful art? Thank you, Jesse. You've got some positive feedback for your art, darling, for the people that have seen it. How do you feel compared to your career beginning, the audience? I feel like that's all in there, too. To show your beautiful artist. Um, yeah, I feel like the so much of how I approach what I do is, is crystallized in the fact that I started in a band and an indie band. I still think like that. I feel most at home when I've got my band around me. I like being part of a group. Um, I mean, I'm sort of a solo artist by default, really. I'm a solo artist because my band split up. Uh, beyond the universe. So, fun fact. I asked Morton Harkett to sing on this with me. I think his voice would have sounded amazing. He said no. It's all right. I still love him. He's still great. Um, massive R half fan growing up. But yes, this song is all about, well, quite sort of, it is as it says, really. It's like a love affair in space. But I think sometimes when you're falling for someone, you can really feel like you're. <laughs> I know, oh my god. Future, watch out. That's why I say. Anyway, sometimes when you're with someone, you feel like you can take on. You feel like you're elevated. You can take on space. You can step on time. You just be on the universe, up floating high in the sky. So that's what this is. Yeah, lots of space, lots of energy. This one, please, this one actually took the longest to come together in terms of production because it's quite Spartan and it's got loads of synths. Yeah, I kind of want to know how many. Next single, so three, four. Yeah, you see, I have to work it out a little bit. I'm not very good at that game. That's your box, says Lovely. Beyond the universe. Is there anyone else you can think of that I should do it with? Oh, people are getting very insistent. Beyond the Universe must be the next single, says Ruben. Uh, this shows a different edge a little bit. A perfect start for side two. Well, thank you. You see, it's important, isn't it? That side one, side two thing. It also really helps frame the record, I think, when you know where you're headed with it, you know? So, yeah, this is side two. And this also shows that at its heart, Hannah is a pop album. I love my pop. And you can do pop that's a little bit interesting and celestial and have fun. Um, Jack says of the Oh, I did sing a song with Jack once. He's a lovely man. Um, please make one last and familiar coloured vinyl, says her. Okay. Uh, Liebenstrom. Uh, yes, okay. I will then. I'll listen to you. Uh, Victor says this is a perfect and beautiful song. Thank you, Victor. Um, I've never met Tony Hart. I don't think I have actually. Um, oh, a lot of, lot of love for Beyond the Universe. Beyond the Universe. This is where it really expands and consumes you. Yeah, I like it. And I like the way at the end we get really, we've got the big chords. And we went to Ed's, Ed Harcourt's local church, and he recorded uh, the chords and the organ. Ed and I love a little expedition to get some extra bits, so I'm going to miss working with Ed. Do you think I should do another album with Ed one day? I should have worn my I have blown Ed Harcourt uh, t-shirt. Something made me feel sad that I said we'd do three in stock. Silly me. Such a show. <laughs> um, I love this song at the heart of the record, this cash it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Leon says listening to this track of the sunshine is the best. Yeah, I can see this whole album suits that vibe, though, doesn't it? It's just, you know, blue skies, stars, clouds, just 
get out there and just get lost in the sky. It's probably because I couldn't go anywhere. More of the wolf cabin magic, indeed. Yeah. No, enough work with Ed. <laughs> but then, um, I'm not going to tell him you said that. I, I blame it. Ed Turn Parkour t shirt should be sold onto as well. You know what, Poppy? I actually agree with you. I think I might do that. What are your expectations for this album, says Tivian? Um, what is my expectation? I don't know. I feel like I made this album very selfishly, like I just needed to make it, so um, okay. I'm now going to let it tell me what it needs. I'd like to um, tour it. There might have to be next year. I blame Ed T-shirts, Jeffing the merch. I'm listening to you. Let's do it. Let's do it. It'd be so funny. Um, not just about the chart position. Definitely not about the chart position. Definitely not. Look, I want my album to do well in the charts. I tell you, I mean this completely hand on heart. The main reason I want things to do well in the chart is actually because this is not just me. I, I've made the record, but and my face is on the cover, but there's a whole team of people behind it. Talented, talented people. The musicians, the engineers, the mixers, the producers, the artworks, every element of it. Everybody that worked on me, they're amazing. So I want everybody that works on it, including as well, but, you know, the record, the cooking vinyl, my management team. I want everybody to feel they are part of something that works. I want morale to be good. I want people to be happy. So that's why the chart thing becomes an element because I want people to feel part of it. But really, and I don't mean this. It's going to sound very twee, but really, from my point of view, your comments, the response I've had, that has filled my heart. I'm a happy girl. I had no idea the album was going to chart as well as it had, as I really didn't. That's wonderful. It means a lot to me. But my relationship with the record is set from when I finished making it. I already know how I feel about it. Sorry, I have a really waffly answer. Hold well on. You okay? Yes, Jessica. Jessica, yeah, okay, cool. The chemistry on stage between you and Richard is incredible. Is it? No, Jessica's think. here! <laughs> um... Yes, I uh, I love working with Richard, and I love the fact that we get to share things. Um, you know, it's I can't imagine what it must be like if you're someone who's you know like a stand-up comedian and you do things on your own. I love the fact that I've got a band who's sharing it with me. So when we come off stage, you know, that's we should all feel good about it. Um, and working with Richard's just wonderful, and I trust him so much. I have to say, he also was um, he did some of the production on this um, additional production across the whole album. He's done that actually for the last two. He's really integral. He gives me a lot of support. He encourages me. He lets me really listen to what I'm saying. So that's, that's good. Uh, Richard is rad. I agree with you, Frank. Thank you for hello, hello, says Marco. Oh, really? Yes, I love that one. I love that album, actually. Um, Steve says, Sophie's flawless vocal-wise and in looks. Thank you, Steve. I'm not going to disagree with you. I'll take the compliment. Hearing in colour is a single. Nah, it's too, uh, it's too bonkers. Let's have it, let's keep it for the album. Um, I do love it though. We'll get to that one, we haven't got that yet. I can tell you more about that in a minute. Beyond the Universe anime music video. Oh, that'd be so cool. Yes. I blame Ed Hogg on mugs, t-shirts, tote bags. I'll go to his head, Poppy. Can't wait for the tour in November. Manchester, are you coming? Uh, training app videos. I can't wait for the Christmas kitchen this day tour. You're going on tour? You're going to come on a tour bus. Actually, I did a tour with Mickey when he was four months old. He came with me for the Sunday tour. Yeah, I'm going to Yeah, okay. Before we sneak away, I'll find him. Let's we'll see, shall we? Uh, when do you return to Mexico? Mexico City, says Marco. As soon as I can. Oh my god, I loved going to Mexico recently. That festival we did was so much fun. Um, the chicken club. So sorry I'm late. I hope you're doing great. I'm doing all right. Don't worry. You haven't missed the whole thing. I've got another, where am I? One, two, three, four. Well, we've got five to go. He's a dreamer. So, he's a dreamer. When we were writing Ed, I thought we were writing about Richard. But I kind of think it's a bit more about my kids. I don't normally overtly write about them, but they're the little creative bouncer souls, so. So, why are you doing that? Yeah? Not until November, but yeah, you're doing that. <laughs> Might a bit of Hannah slip into the Christmas kitchen this good job. Yeah, I think it has to. Um, yeah, it would feel very strange not to put it in, but I have to find the right balance for that gig. Also, how many Christmas songs is appropriate? Comments, please. 
uh, 80 synth wave anime music videos as Mona. That would be incredible. That's such a good idea. I can picture it in my head. Come to Brazil, says Retro Pop Games. Yes, please. I went before to um, Rio and Sao Paulo. I absolutely loved it. Yes, please have me back. Um, Chelsea, I know. He's wearing... So I don't think McKeever knows really what Chelsea is, but that's a little football kit he found earlier that was his bigger brother's, and he's put it on and he feels, he feels good. And his hair's like a 80s footballer, so it all works. Um, Steve, oh my God, thank you very much for coming. Like, yes, Steve, I can see all of them. Uh, Tech House says, come to France. Sure. I'm like the Wayne's World Festival. If you book me, I will come. Um... Julia Camber fun, you are beautiful. Thank you. So are you. Thank you for joining me. I love the instrumentals in that song. So yes, he's a dreamer. Had I just said to Ed, let's have a really big instrumental section. Let's just go off on one. I want a proggy element. Um, I know that's a bit indulgent, but not every song has to be all about my voice. It's nice to have gaps and space and drama. I find that really exciting. Um, so that was totally, I really, really pushed that. I wanted that element in the album. Um, I think that Ed Harcourt Calabro made, you, made your song repertoire. Thank you, Per. I will pass that to Ed. I really, look, I love making disco music. The Kitchen Disco was such a, such a big part of who I am. But this is the other part of who I am. And I feel very fortunate that I've had both sides of the coin represented. And I know that, you know, I could have made like a, a mock disco album, but I'm telling you now, it wouldn't have been very good because my heart would not have been in it and I hope that you are okay with me being that kind of artist really. I, I have to go with my heart. Looking forward to seeing you at Lafayette on the 30th. Chicken Club, me too. I can't wait. Cheeky 70s sound to but I know. But so this one, um, I'm thinking a bit ABBA, I'm thinking a bit Fleetwood Mac. I love this track. She said after saying not doing this guy. Total disco. Four on the floor. Got the high hats all the time. Um, I love this track. It's also the only one on that whole album that has a tiny bit of strings on it. I was so determined not to have strings at all, but it just really suited it. Um, yeah, I love this song. Um, it came from the heart, that thing when you look at yourself in the mirror. I mean, I'm 44, so sometimes you do just see yourself as, you know, you see the changes in your face and. Uh, and I was thinking about the idea of uh, the mirror reflecting back of, of dysfunctional relationship. I mean, writing hard songs is happy. Writing songs about bad love, it just flies. It's so rich in inspiration. Um, Reflections next single says Poppy. Oh, I'm sure it's fun in the works. I don't know. Do you like Pet Shop Boys? I love Pet Shop Boys, Marco. Yes, I was lucky enough to support them. Um, they've influenced me. Oh my God, so many good tunes. Um, yeah, I absolutely love Petra Boys. And if you listen to my Kitchen Disco radio show on BBC Sounds, I play them at any opportunity. Uh, what's your favourite song on Make a Scene, says Marco? Mm, I think it's probably Heartbreak. I know it's a single, so a bit of an obvious choice, but that's just been so enduring. And when I sing it live, it makes me feel like a superhero. Uh, Hannah Latin American Tour. Yes, Rodrigo, let's make it happen. I'd be well up for that. Oh, Gabriella came to see me in Guadalajara. Thank you. Wasn't that so fun? More video clips. Yes, Jeremy, I'd love to. Uh, Sophie in Chile, Lollapalooza. Yes, please. I mean, look, I have, my diary is pretty clear next year. Let's make it happen. Um, yes, there's lots of conversation about going to Latin America. I, I, I'm there. If there's, a, there's no delay on me. I'm there. It's a sin on the wheel. Exactly, yes. Someone mentioned that I sang a Pet Shop Boys song on tour last year. Uh, heartbreak, wonderful. Thank you, Tibian. Um, it's like your album from the Kinesis for me is, is your reflections. You might be right there, actually, Roger. I think there was certainly a lot of nostalgia to this record, and it made me think about songs I wrote when I was in the audience and when I was making my first album as well. There are songs on hand that I think wouldn't have sounded out of place on Read My Lips. I don't know if that maybe was to do with lockdown and kind of going back through old memories or just a point where I was at or the stylistics. Ah, Hearing in Colour. So Hearing in Colour is a song about, inspired by, I should say, um, synesthesia. So Ed has something called synesthesia, which is basically, um, there's different types of it, but it's essentially where 
For him, if he hears music, he sees colours and days of the week have a different colour. And it's basically your senses sort of sending different signals to each other. There's a really fascinating one called mirror touch synesthesia, which would be where if I were, you know, someone saw someone touch their arm, I would feel the touch. So this song is about the kind of, the way that falling in love affects you and suddenly you're seeing, you're seeing things and hearing things and everything is sort of alert, but also slightly jumbled because you're so overwhelmed. But then the chorus hits and it's like, ah, it's actually over, a bit overwhelming and I don't really know how I feel about this and this is what I want. But then, so this is minor, that you've got major chords for the verse, minor for the chorus for your worry about it. And then by the time you get to the end of the track, you've reached euphoria and you decide you've given yourself over to the world ride that love is. Um, kisses from France. Thank you, the mood kill. Kisses back. Collab with Goldfrap. Yes, please. Um, actually, very sweetly, Alison Goldfrap sent me a little message today. She had her album out, solo album out, not long ago. And it's really lovely. And I've been a fan of her and of Goldfrap for, well, as long as I can remember. Just brilliant and very influential. So, um, yeah, she sent me a little congrats on the album, which is really amazing. I'm a massive fan. Uh, Alfie says, I love your music. You've been a staple in my playlist. Thank you, Alfie. I feel like you guys aren't able to, you put messages in and then they get clipped off. Rodeo, sort it out, let people write longer. Um, gorillas, what, for a collab? Is that what you're thinking, um, Oliver? Could be, sure, why not? Just, just like, get them to ask me. <laughs> um, hello from Moscow, says Miguel, hello back to Moscow. Um, is there going to be another single release, George? Yes, there will be, George. We're just not sure if it should be. I see the reflections will be on the universe. Be both. I'd, let's have them all be singles. <laughs> uh, Wanderlust is the best album ever. Thank you, Lisa. I think that album is very, very close to my heart. Um, yeah, that felt like such a... Like, commercially, it felt like such a risk. But I wasn't thinking like that. I would just wanted to do it for me. And it sort of birthed the... Uh, what you could maybe call the selfish trilogy, making songs that I just want to make because that's where my head's at and I'm not going through a big group of people telling me if it's the right thing for me or not. I'm just thinking with my heart. What's your favourite song from a different artist that you wish? Oh, I don't know. If, well, I think about a song I'd wish I'd written. It's loads. I mean, Tainted Love just popped into my head. Like a prayer. I would love to have written Like a Prayer. It feels like my song anyway. Don't tell Madonna. Um... Uh, Mannequin Sophie's 21 years old this week. You mean get over you? Bloody hell. So anyway, look, here's the euphoric major chords. See, you're all happy now. Love has happened and it's all good. Um, taking my friend Claire to see at Bexhill. Very lovely. Love Bexhill. That's in November. Um, that's, such a, that's actually where we start the tour. So yes, bring some tinsel with you. Um, Thanks for the amazing album, says Dennis. My favourite so far is we were watching you. Dennis, you're speaking my language. That is my other equal first favourite song on the album. Selfish Trilogy, the name for a biography. <laughs> I agree with you, Scott. Yes, maybe another T-shirt. Favourite song from Shoot From The Hip. Ooh, I think it might be... Um, I'm trying to remember which ones I've got on Shoot From The Hip now. Uh, there's a song I did... Um, oh, God, I can't think of the broken toys on. I'll come back to you. It's a love song anyway. In fact, it was his Barbara Goldfrapp. Um, so this song is, this is Ed and I being our playful selves, really. We love a conceit. We love an idea or something. The idea of this being discarded because you're, the love, you were like a toy and then you, your springs stop working, your batteries stop working. You're on the scrap heap. I just really like the imagery of that. So yeah, this was a fun song to write. I feel like it's a little bit al aligned with um, my puppet heart. This is like the Hannah um, version of puppet heart. Um, yeah. A little bit um, hip hop. What's your favorite song of Manic Street Preachers? Um, I mean, I suppose it's probably my motorcycle FTS. Yes, I think I'll go back to the beginning. It's just got really good memories for me. Um, do you up with Kylie, says Ricky. Everybody's very keen for this to happen. Sure. What happened to the song about the heist? Kashik, I really love that one. Um, 
I might have to sort of dig it out. We haven't been it we haven't been mixed or mastered, but I'll make it super light. I won't change you remains a fave to date. Thank you, Emmanuel. I'm thinking about maybe doing that enough yet, let's see. Uh I love this one too. Thank you, Natalia. Yes, me too. Will you write the UK Eurovision song for next year? I'd like to, Brett. How does one apply? I've literally got no idea. I sort of picture it like a hole in the wall and you put like a demo in on the cassette. <laughs> but yeah, I'd love to have a go at writing a Eurovision song. What in your opinion is your best and worst single? Well, best. Mm. I think, I think it, I mean, it's a really obvious choice, but I think I have to go with Groove Jet just because it changed the way I thought about what I was up to. Although I also would put in a little vote for Move This Mountain because it was a sort of sign of intent, really. Uh, Polydor didn't want me to release it, and I was very keen to make sure the indie version of me was represented. Um, but then my worst single, well, I don't think it's fair to say because people have their own favourites, and I... I remember when Madonna started criticising Material Girl and I was like, hey, I like that song. I feel like if, you, if you've got a song that I've done that you like, I don't want to rubbish it. It's like, nah, nothing. Uh, remember the audience, the band? Yes, Marco, I was in it. <laughs> no, really, it's, um, it's still part of me all that, you know. Collab with Natalie and Brulia, says Adrian. Oh, she's very lovely, that'd be fun. Um, I love Move This Mountain. Thank you, JP. Yeah, me too, actually. Yeah, special one. Also, I got to write it with um, Alex James from Blur. And uh, so it's meeting people that you've always loved and writing with them. Well, that's always exciting. Sophie, should I get a Hannah-related tattoo? You can if you want. When I was in Mexico, in Guadalajara, a guy had the, um, the kanji. It's the, uh, that on his arm with cherry blossom around it. Before the album come out. I hope he likes it. Um, how was your collaboration with Bessie Boo last year's Pop Popland? Lovely. What a lovely, lovely woman. Oh my God. Again, very exciting. Loved her always. And uh, she's just glorious, like a little ray of sunshine. Yes, love her. Um, oh, so this is, I think it might be one of my favorites. This is between this one and So the Worlds Fall Off. This is just a little bit daft, but I just can't wait to do it live. It's really like empowering. And I like the mood of it. I think I quite like playing sort of detached baddies. <laughs> See reference heartbreak. So this one I picture myself as a sort of empirical alien. Um, this is basically, when we were writing this, it was sort of post lockdowns, you know, everything going pear shaped with Brexit, cost of living, just nonsense. It's been absolutely bamboozling people. Um, so I was picturing aliens watching our planet and then they're like, mm, you guys are really in trouble. So they land and they're like, we've been watching you, we will help you survive. But they're quite pragmatic and they've only they've got room for everybody, obviously, it's a big global population, they can just take some people. So it's a little bit brutal, but they've decided that yes, Earth is broken, time for something new. Um, and when you get to the end of the track, when I was in Tokyo, the, if you haven't been, basically all the road crossings, they don't just have you press the button and wait for the beep. It's not a beep, it's a melody that plays. And all of them have different melodies, each crossing. And the one that was near the little Airbnb where my mum and Sonny and I were sleeping had this really quite melancholy little tune. So I recorded it on my phone and it was very windy and you hear the wind blowing. This little melody. So right at the end when this ship I love this mid light. So cool. We are just a conscious of another. Oh, Ben thinks this is one of the best albums I made. Thank you, Ben. Oh, Marco, let's cut, cut straight to the heart. Interesting fact, cut straight to the heart. It's the first song I wrote with Ed. Uh, we didn't actually meet each other. We wrote it remotely. Um, we met later on in the studio. He'd done the backing track, I did the top line. But that was actually the first song before we even did Love Is A Camera. Um, anyway, uh, what were we talking about before that? Yes, at the end of this track, we tried to create the sound of like, look, this is when, so the doors are still open on the spaceship. People can make, make it in. Soon, the doors are gonna start closing. Are you on the ship? Are you being saved? Um, and then right at the end of the spaceship, 
up to the sky, you can hear the little tune of uh, the road crossing sign. Uh, have you considered releasing an album between? Oh, sorry, I'm going to pronounce it right. You've got the, I'm sorry, only half your question has come up. I'm going to write the next bit and I will answer you. Um, you love Starlight. Oh, I love Starlight, Alan. Thank you. Um, Julie says, thank you for giving your time. Thank you. No, thank you. Do you mean this evening? Yes, anytime. Um, in fact, this album has come to an end. Oh, Poppy, don't cry. Sci-Fi Sophie, yes, yay. See, look. Here are the doors, they're closing. Quick, get in the ship. Octavio, I keep listening to you while I'm driving to my work. Is that what you said, Octavio? Radio, sort it out with the uh, character limit. Thank you for signing my copy of Spinning Plates. It says Zafa, Zafa, Zafira. Have you considered? Oh, God, but you need to do the next bit of the question. Thank you for doing the live stream. Thank you, Harriet, for joining me. I thought I'd be talking to myself, which, you know, I'm capable of doing. You missed my little pal, Nikki. The cassette is gorgeous. Thank you, Renzo. Oh no, the doors are closing. Are you in the ship? You're not. You are. This is inspired by Mars Singer. No, Matthew. <laughs> I just like the idea of this, like, spooky little aliens. Oh, the door's closed. Sorry. Come on, little spaceship. Oh, you can see it. You can see it. Oh. It's gone. What was it? The rest of us have to stay on Earth. And listen, there's the tune from The Crossing near where I stayed in Tokyo. All roads lead to Tokyo. Oh, thank you so much. Um, daft as it may sound, it was actually really nice for me as well because um, I haven't really listened to it in full since um, I did the track listing with Ed and Richard. Um, so it was actually really lovely for me as well. And it's made me feel happy and you've all been very sweet. And yeah. Thank you very much for your amazing questions. Um, do you want to come and say goodbye, Mickey? Bye. <laughs> Here. Bye. Because we're going to about to destroy you. Oh, blimey. Oh, this is Ray as well. And Mickey. Oh, okay. Oh, Thank you very much, guys. I don't know how I close this. <laughs> do I do? Oh, there. No. Thank you. Big love. Hey, only crap. Oh, thanks, Ray. All right, thank you so much, guys, and um, let's do this again sometime. Thank you. Oh, actually, I meant to say, if you're anywhere near London, on the 27th of June, I'm going to do um, a little intimate uh, gig. I'll sing some songs acoustically with Pablo, who actually played on the record as well. Um, do some traction the album, do some other songs, answer your questions. Uh, you can buy tickets through Banquet or probably on my official site, is that right? Yes, let's say yes. Um, I think there'll be a proper announcement about it tomorrow, but it'd be really nice to see some of you there. And um, I've made sure that the ticket price is, is, is pretty inexpensive because I know you've already given so much already with anything you've done to support the album. So it's not really about that. I just wanted to have a chance to see you all and do something a little bit special and a bit intimate because um, that'd be really nice. So 